Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the P4070 and we're looking at general operational limits. We'll be looking at speed limits, prohibited maneuvers, takeoff, climb, cruise, wartime emergency power, and finally dive. First, speed limits. Do not extend landing gear and landing light at speed in excess of 200 miles per hour. I always say 190 just to be safe. Do not extend flaps at speeds in excess of 190 miles an hour. I usually say 180 to be safe. Make no turns below 130 miles an hour. The plane is simply not going to do it. It's not like a spit where it can turn really low speeds. When external tanks are installed, air speed restricted as follows. And you can see those restrictions there. Next, prohibited maneuvers. Intentional spins of more than one half turn. Outside loops, so you know, inverted loops, whatever you want to call it. Whip stalls. Prolonged inverted flight, does very bad things to your oil. Snap roll, so you're going to use it anyway if you're in a dogfight, but you're not supposed to do them. Slow rolls above 313 miles per hour. Slow speed turns, we've already talked about that. When external tanks are installed, we may not do any dynamic maneuvers, whatever that actually means, training landings, or high speed dives. It's quite an important thing, actually, because it's going to be easy to leave your tanks on by accident. Tight turns or dives exceeding 225 miles per hour are prohibited with cow flaps open. So that's really important to ensure that your cow flaps are not left open, as tail buffeting may result. Next, we're going to look at our engine limitations. First of all, take off. I am going to be at for interest of auto propeller mode. I'm going to be in auto rich for the mixture. And if I were to accelerate, my maximum takeoff engine configuration will be 52 inches mercury manifold pressure and just over 2,700 RPM. And we have a maximum duration of 15 one five minutes in that configuration for climb we're allowed to be in the green band here and perversely it's the blue vat bland on the rpm so we can be up to about 42 43 inches mercury boost pressure and rpm up to 2600 knock that back ever so slightly there we have unlimited duration in that configuration Next, cruise, as you can get the idea now, is going to be blue in the boost pressure, inches mercury, and it's going to be 2,300 or so on the RPM. And that will be allowed, again, unlimited time in cruise. Next, WEP, wartime emergency power and the water methanol injection system. Now, we don't have that working at this time in the early access that I'm doing now, so I can't show it to you, but we can explain the theory. When we have WEP, we'll be allowed up to just below 64 inches mercury, and we've got the red mark here also for WEP, 2,750 RPM. And with WEP engaged, we have up to five minutes general operation now always remember take those figures with a pinch of salt they all depend on things like how fast you're going and so those times will vary with airspeed the lower the airspeed the less time you've got before you overheat and you can see that i'm starting to cook my engine here because i've got zero airspeed because i've got it in active pause higher the airspeed the better your cooling is going to be so you need to keep an eye on your temperatures next we're looking at the boost control lever this little guy here he controls the turbo supercharger essentially and this is causing a lot of controversy out there according to the user manual and if you like equidynamics and and dcs from takeoff this guy here can be caged to the throttle fixed to the throttle with this little bracket here a lot of you guys in the comments don't like that and you say that the user manual disagrees with that from what i can see i mean i've got the official user manual in front of me and it says that you will attach the boost lever here to the throttle from takeoff or at least you can there's no harm done in the version that we've got that's the best that I can give you with the informa official information that we've got there. And one thing to note, obviously, is that the boost lever must never be, if you like, ahead of the throttle lever. There's one good reason for caging it. So diving is a very important one. Trim the plane slightly tail heavy so that you need little stick pressure to hold the plane in a dive. Have cow flaps closed for a dive. Decrease the manifold pressure to keep it from overboosting the engine. Start dives in a P-47 from level flight by pushing the nose down. Do not start the dive from a split S. Out of interest, I don't know why that is, but I'd uh, like your comment on that. 
Do not retard the throttle suddenly in a high speed dive. The nose becomes heavy and the dive steepens. The dive speed will increase. Recover gradually from a high speed dive. A sharp pull out places unnecessary load on the wings and control surfaces. You can snap your wings. Never dive with cowls open, although you probably wouldn't have your cowls open anyway, but that's a thing. The 30 version, which is what we're in at the moment, is also equipped with compressibility recover flaps to use to pull out. And this is a really important thing, obviously, as I'm sure you're all aware, warbirds can easily get in a dive and become unrecoverable and you will die. Um, look at the Curverse, for instance. If that happens, we have compressibility recovery flaps. Click that guy there, click that guy down there, look under the wings. Now, it's small and I didn't notice this at first, but there we believe we have the compressibility recover flaps under there that are going to allow you to pull out of a dive. Those are the operating procedures of the P47-1 in early access. Things are going to change with WEP, etc. later on. I hope that was useful and see you later.